We need to talk about how you can create an automated cloud flow with Copilot with one sentence. Copilot is changing how functional developers and citizen developers in the Power Platform, like myself, are getting work done. Now you can create an entire automated cloud flow in just seconds, just by telling Copilot what to build. Let's get into it. In 2023, Copilot has to be the biggest news coming to the Power Platform, both for end users of the software, as well as the front end for developers. One of these things is Copilot being able to create apps or flows for you using natural language with either some of the pre-made prompts or a custom one. While this stuff continues to blow my mind, there are still a lot of nuances where the co-pilot might not necessarily know exactly what you're talking about, or you might tell it to do something and it might not because it doesn't completely understand. But with that being said, there is still a ton of really cool functionality that it can currently do and it's only in preview. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is navigate to the Power Automate Maker Portal. Once you're there, you're gonna see that on the top half of the screen, there is this Create with Copilot web page. This is gonna show a chat window of sorts and different prompts that Copilot is gonna suggest for you to use. So you can see here that we have different prompts, some using OneDrive, some using SharePoint to send an email. We wanna create an automated cloud flow that when an opportunity is closed as one, it's then gonna send a notification email to the owner of the opportunities manager. In the real world, you may wanna be notified of when your team members have a big sale, which account was this opportunity with, how big was it, how many dollars was it. And these are all things that can be contained in our flow created with Copilot. So let's go ahead and navigate here and begin typing out our prompt. We're gonna say, when an opportunity is closed as one, send an email to the owner's manager. Once you have this typed in, you're going to go ahead and select generate. Once you hit generate, it is going to work and then bring you to a suggested flow screen. It is going to suggest the different actions it thinks you need based off of the prompt you gave it. So you can see here, it thinks that we need that when a row is added, modified or deleted, which would be when an opportunity record is updated to closed, we need to get a row by ID, which we would use for getting the opportunities owner, and then get a row by ID two to get the owner's manager, which is an additional lookup on the user table. And then say we wanted to add a condition and then send the email. Now say for example, you didn't necessarily like this, you do have this super handy show a different suggestion button in the bottom left. This is gonna show you an additional suggestion. It might move around the actions as ours did here. For example, ours added the condition or moved the condition to a different spot. I have seen it as well where it might provide a suggestion to use a different action as opposed to a Dataverse action. Say for example, you had your user information stored in a different database, it could suggest that or if you used Office 365, it could, it could suggest something like that as well. And you could use those and find that in these different suggestions. These are the only two suggestions it gave us here. And I'm gonna say that we actually like the first one more. So let's go ahead and navigate back using this arrow. And then we're gonna hit next. Once you hit next, it's gonna ask you to set up your connections for them. It should do this automatically using your current credentials. So once these are all green, go ahead and hit create flow. And then this is going to, in seconds, create a full skeleton of the suggested flow template it just gave you. Now it will most likely not have all of the parameters filled out on all of your actions when you first get here, but it is okay because we can still use Copilot to take this flow to the next level and not even have to configure any of it. So you can see here on our first action, we have an invalid parameter. If we click on that, it's gonna show us that what we're missing is the table name. Now, if you remember in our example, we are looking for opportunities. We want this trick to be triggered when opportunities are closed as one. So previously, you could then go to this dropdown, find opportunities and select that, but let's go ahead and show you how Copilot can do this for us. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate down to the chat window and I'm gonna say to make the triggers table name the opportunities table. So now if we click back on our trigger and navigate up to the table name, you can see the opportunities table is now filled in into that. Now also you'll notice that we have our change type currently set to added or modified. In our example, we want this to only be modified. 
Let's see if we can try to use Copilot to update this. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate down to the chat bot, down to the text window, and type change the trigger type to just modified. You'll see that this phrase Copilot does not like. In my first message, I explicitly laid out, hey, in this action, update this parameter with this. So you can see in this message, it's not as explicit with the parameters. And so this is definitely a limitation of Copilot in its preview state as of today. But let's go ahead and rephrase our message to be a little more clear. Let's say to change the triggers change type to modified. If we send this and after it's done working on it, you'll see that it's now updated the trigger. Now let's just click on the action to confirm that it did the correct update. Now this is funny, I have no idea why Copilot did this. For whatever reason, it did update our change type but it set it to deleted. Now say Copilot were to ever do something you did not want, you can always then go to the chat that Copilot sent you of the update and hit this undo button here. Once you do that, go ahead and hit revert. This is gonna revert the change or changes that it just did in the action. So now if we click on our trigger, you'll see that it's back to added or modified. So let's just go ahead and manually change this to modified so that we can move on with the example. Now, if we move on to our next action, you can see that it is missing several different parameters. It is missing the table name and the row ID. Let's go ahead, instead of typing this in, utilize Copilot again to do this for us. So what's something I could type in? I would recommend typing something along the lines of make the get a row by ID actions row ID the owner of the trigger opportunity. So this statement is explicitly outlining, hey, update this action, update this parameter, and make it this from this action. So if we go ahead and send this to Copilot, you'll see that we have now updated this action. Now let's go ahead and click on the get a row by ID to confirm. Now you can see that this automatically updated the table name and the row ID to be dynamic content from the trigger. If we hover over this, you can see this is the trigger outputs owner ID, which is the GUID that we're looking for. I didn't have to know anything about dynamic content. I didn't have to know anything about actions or triggers. I didn't have to know anything about HTML or trigger outputs. All I had to do was tell Copilot what to do. Now, what is so big about this? Different businesses and clients will pretty much always have their business processes outlined. The different steps in their business process of how they operate, who gets notified of what. They most likely really understand those processes but don't necessarily know how to create an automation in Power Automate. But now they can almost explain it step by step to Power Automate and create the automation. Let's go ahead and do this again for our next get a row by ID. So let's go ahead and click on the, our next action and you can see that we are missing two parameters once again. Let's go ahead and fill out the table name by hand. We are looking for the user's entity, but we are gonna use Copilot to populate the get a row by ID for us once again. So if we navigate back down to the chat window, we're gonna type out, make the row ID of the get a row by ID to action, the manager of the get a row by ID user. So this again is outlining what parameter we want it to populate, what action we want it to populate it on, and what specifically do we want it to populate it with. We want it to populate it with this record of this action. So if we go ahead and submit this prompt, let's see what Copilot comes up with. You can see here that now it has populated the row ID with the manager ID of the previous action, the get a row by ID. I hope you're beginning to see how world changing this can be. This is giving anybody the ability to create automated cloud flows. But what's crazy is Copilot does not stop there. You can even have it do this for your scheduled flows. Now, if you're wanting to learn how, go ahead and check out this video here. This is gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process of how you can utilize Copilot in creating a scheduled flow. I'm gonna go ahead and build the rest of this flow. Thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfelt. Consider subscribing, and I'm excited to connect with you guys in the next one.